Welcome to the podcast, Star. We are so happy to have you here. We haven't heard a success story in a while, and you have a big one. So I'm excited to share all of your knowledge, what you've learned along the way, and of course, your backstory. And we're going to get into some really great topics today. So welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, let's start with your backstory because everybody's got to have a story. Like why you're even here, your right. backstory, why you are so into fasting and what, you know, how it worked for you so well. Um, just take us up to now and, and how you got started with fasting. Okay. So, I mean, basically typical story where you, um, your whole life throughout having babies and, and losing the baby weight and all that kind of stuff, you're always dieting. You're always trying to find ways to lose weight, find ways to be healthy. Um, I did all the stay at home videos when my babies were young and everything. And then as they were a little bit older, um, I started like getting into CrossFit and I was a personal trainer and I was a Zumba instructor and, you know, did a lot of strength training, um, was working out a lot, was doing lots of, um, I was working with nutritionists. I had like, I had to eat this at this time, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then, um, it was going fine for a few years. And then I feel like all of a sudden at about 35, I just feel like I hit a wall or something. I mean, I was, we had stressful stuff going on in our lives. We were building a house, you know, we were living with our family, friends, and so there was a lot going on. So the gym was getting put on the back burner and all that kind of stuff. And then the weight just kind of like started creeping on. And I was tell, I could tell it was starting to come on because my clothes weren't fitting so great. But then it like, all of a sudden, I just feel like I looked in the mirror and I was like, I'm like obese, like 200. The last recorded weight was like 207, but I really feel like it was more like a 210 I think I was just in denial, but, um, so that was back in, so in 2019, um, I had a friend, so this was when I was at my worst. I mean, I was just so heavy. couldn't figure out when you come from being a personal trainer and a Zumba instructor and you're up on stage and you're thin ish and healthy ish your whole life. And then all of a sudden, all those things you did to lose weight, meal replacement shakes, I mean, calorie counting, macro counting, did all that stuff. And it wasn't working this time around. I I don't know why. I, I feel like I was trying and it just wasn't working. My um my blood work was terrible at this time. Um, I like my I had high cholesterol, I was on high um cholesterol medication. I was on thyroid medication because supposedly my thyroid wasn't working. Um I was on antidepressants because I was depressed, so depressed with everything. Um, and how I felt, how I looked, everything. I was always inflamed. I was in crazy amount of pain. Um, my blood work even showed like my C-reactive protein was over like eight. So obviously lots of inflammation going on in my body. Um, at this time I did not check like an A1C or anything. Of course the doctors didn't do that. Um, so I don't know what my starting one, um, would have been, but, um, so anyways, so got found, a. Uh, friend, a high school friend texted me back in 2019 in July, she texted me and she looked just like she did in high school. And I don't mean just skinny. I mean like her face. Like I was like, why is your skin like so good? What's going on? And, um, she's like, Oh, thanks so much. I've been intermittent fasting. I just eat one meal a day. Like you should really read this book. It's so whatever, like get it on audible. Cause she knows I'm, I'm not really a big reader. So I got it on audible and I listened to it and I was like, everything just resonated with me where I was like everything she was saying. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me. And then she's like, okay. Like I, so then she just says what she started doing with intermittent fasting. So I'm like, I I'm starting this. So in August of, um, 2019, the end of August, I started intermittent fasting, basically doing one meal a day. So I just drank water basically in the morning until about lunchtime or so. That's just, that's where I was trying to get to in the very beginning. Um, and I still did one meal a day, which, you know, is a little bit explained. People really think one meal a day means one plate of food only, and then you're done. But that's really not how one meal a day. Yes, we eat one plate of food. But I mean, even at that, like if I'm at home and I serve myself a plate of food, 
and I want seconds. I go, I go get seconds. So it's not like I just eat a plate of food and I'm just done for the day. Um, so, you know, I, but I, that is relatively how I started out in the beginning. I started out with a snack. Then a few hours later I would have my meal. And then if I wanted something after my meal, you know, I'd have something and my body responded really well. I just, you know, and not everybody's bodies respond the same. Everybody's different, but my body was like really responded well to it. And so, um, I started that in August and by February, um, I had already hit like my first goal weight. I think I lost like 61 pounds or something like that. Um, hit my first goal weight at 140. And then, um, I went on and lost another, what is it? 14 or something pounds. Cause I lost 81 altogether. So, um, and that was by a full year. So within a year, the August of that next year, 2020, um, I had lost 81 pounds in that time. Um, cause after I hit my first goal weight, it just, the weight just still kind of kept coming off. And I, I was adding in different things. Like I was doing a, a meal a day, which, you know, is explained of like doing a longer fast. So anywhere from 36 to 42 hour fast, and then following that with a proper refeed day where you have to, you know, make sure you get two plus meals in. Um, so I would do that here and there. And I think that just kind of helped keep me in autophagy longer and was just really helping me burn more fat and be into ketosis. Um, and so I, yeah, the weight just, and it was just a lifestyle. And that's the thing. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. So when people say, oh, I tried fasting, it didn't work for me. I just like want to put my fingers in my ears because <laughs> I always, I'm like, you don't try fasting. You try sushi. You don't try fasting. Like fasting is a lifestyle that we really, truly need to understand what it is that we're doing when we're fasting. What is happening during the fast? Like if you understand what's happening, that you're first, you need to understand, you know, why you're gaining the weight, even when you're doing a low calorie diet. And we have to understand insulin and how insulin works. And we have to understand that when you have too much of it in your body, it's constantly telling you you're hungry. So you're constantly feeding it and then you're just making more. So then it's constantly circulating and you never know when you have true hunger or just insulin making you think you're hungry. And then if you always have that circulating insulin, eat, so on a low calorie diet, you probably have circulating insulin even, and you're not able to ever burn through your stored glycogen. And if you can't burn through your stored glycogen, because you have this force field of insulin, that's not allowing you to tap into your stored fat. It doesn't matter how much you go work out at the gym and do all this. You're, you're not going to lose weight if you're constantly spiking your insulin all day long. And so understanding that concept and being like, okay, so if I just drink water, if I keep my insulin at bay, that brings down the force field of insulin. If you bring that force field of circulating insulin down, then you can start tapping into what we have stored in our muscles and in our liver. And when you burn through that, then you flip that metabolic switch, get into ketosis and you're burning your stored fat every day. And then you just repeat it the next day. So then it's like, it becomes your lifestyle. Like it just becomes part of you. Um, and that's what I've just really come to find over almost four years and been keeping the weight off for, you know, almost three and I have, and I think that's my biggest mind blowing thing. Anyone can lose weight. Anyone can go starve yourself, lose weight, do whatever you got to do to get there. Um, but can you keep it off? Because that's the, that's the roller coaster ride. I was tired of being on. I, I was tired of all the ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. And it was just always such a struggle. And then at one point you just like give up and you're like, well, I guess I'm 40 and fat or, you know, it's just going to, how it's be like going to be a grandma and grandma, maybe it's just is what it is, you know, but you don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept being miserable, you know, in the body you you're in, you can change it. You can change your health. You can get your health back. You can reverse diabetes. You can reverse insulin resistance. You can do all these things just by tweaking a few things in, in your daily lifestyle. Yeah. The sustainability part of it is really what trips people up and I think we just have overcomplicated things so much, not only nutrition, but meal timing and macronutrients and exercise and what type of exercise and are you in ketosis? Are you burning fat? Are you burning glucose? It's like, people are just like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what these words even mean, <laughs> let alone how to implement something. 
So when you have something like intermittent fasting, you're like, okay, I start eating here. I end eating here. And you just make it that simple, at least to begin with. It's so refreshing. And then you start to feel so much better that you can just, you know, start at least have a starting point that's black or white and, you know, people can follow. I, and I find that that the simplicity of it and you not overcomplicating it can definitely be one of the biggest strategies as to why it's so sustainable. Um, but so many things in your story, I'd like to go through. And when I'm coming through and talking with somebody who's been really successful and has a great success story, like you do, I kind of like to go through like five different stages, um, that, that I go through with, with people and their success stories. But, um, I'm assuming you read Jen Stevens book, delay, don't deny, right? Like that was kind of the catalyst that started for you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause I'm sure people are like, wait, what book was it? <laughs> oh yes. Sorry. I didn't mention no, that's that. Okay. So, I'm a big yes. fan of Jen and I've been on her podcast and, um, you know, I think she teaches a lot of great material. So yeah. So that was the one, and that's one of the first books I ever read too. And it just, it's simple enough to make sense. Um, but I like to go kind of start in like the prepare phase. Like what did you do to prepare yourself? Like, I know you read the book, but it's one thing to read the book and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. But were there certain things in your life or your environment that you're like, okay, this is what I need to do to be successful. Like what was your prepare phase? If you can remember back, you know, it's been almost four years, but what did you do to actually get things started and implemented? I think that when fasting got brought to me, I was at such a low in my life and I was so I mean, talk about like seeing no light at the end of the tunnel because you feel like you're a personal trainer. You should be able to figure out how to lose weight. You're the, like, you've, you've been healthy your whole life. Why is this? Not? And so I was just at such, and I'm like, nothing is working. I mean, I was trying meal replacement shakes. I was trying all the things I was doing, um, Fentermine even like I was going to a doctor and getting prescribed Fentermine and I would go back in every month, not losing weight. And he'd be like, I don't know what to tell you. Like everybody loses weight on Fentermine. I took Fentermine like 18 years ago and lost weight just fine. But then when I took it four years ago or whatever it was for a little while, wasn't losing any weight on it. So it was like, you know, um, <laughs> what was your question again? Oh, Sorry. no, just how you, no, that's okay. Like oh, how, how I came upon like, so, like, so, 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 like, so I was so field. miserable that I feel like when I read the book, I was just like, um, you know what star, this is your last resort. I honestly feel like it was just this light bulb moment that went off in my head. I don't know how to explain it. And that's with fasting. I feel like it's with anything like you have to plant the seed with some people, but like until they're ready and until they're fully ready to commit, like they have to be absolutely almost at rock bottom to be able to commit sometimes, because sometimes if they're just like, mm, I just kind of want to lose like 10 pounds. And those ones are a lot harder to stay committed because they just have this few little weight. But when you're really like, when you really grasp it as like a lifestyle. And I think, like I said, I was at just such a like low that I was like, I'm going to put my all into this one thing and, and let's see what happens. I have to give it my all because in my head, I was just like, you've tried everything else. You've tried the macro counting. You've tried, you know, everything. So if you've tried all those things and you're still here and, and like, let's just give this a go. And so I feel like I just jumped in head first because I was like, this has to save my life as my last thing. Or I'm like, you know, like I said, I was already on high cholesterol medication and I thought I was going to have a heart attack at any moment. Um, just because of all the history with everything, you know, I was worried about diabetes. I was worried about so many things. And so, um, I was just like, you have to get control of your health, like right now, like, and, and this has to be it because we've tried all these other things. So let's just give it a go. And so I think, that's where I was just, I was, I was so tired that I'm like, I can commit to this. I can commit to doing, you know, one meal a day and I, not everybody can start out one meal a day. And I'm not saying you have to start out one meal a day either. Um, I have a lot of clients that, you know, we just ease into it and everything. And you're just, you're just trying to skip breakfast or, you know, really too. A lot of people are like, I love breakfast. I don't want to skip breakfast. I don't like dinner. So like, I think a lot of people need to understand that with intermittent fasting, all you're trying to do is be mindful 
that you're not putting food in your body all day and spiking your insulin bottom line. Like they're literally everybody, like you said, tries to overcomplicate fasting so much. And they want to know, tell me exactly how long to fast. Tell me exactly how long to eat. Tell me this, tell me that. No, this is a lifestyle, which means I don't know about you, but I don't live groundhog's day. So every day in my life is different. So I don't like sticking to fasting protocols. I don't, I don't really believe in having to stick to an 18, six or a 16, eight or a 24 or 22, two. No, I I really don't like that because I feel like when people do that, then they're treating fasting like a diet because on days they might be super hungry or they might be on their period. So their hormones are ramped up and they're really, really hungry, but they're sticking to their time and they're getting to 22 hours hell or high water. It's like, no, like if you're, you need to listen to your hormones. And if you, you know, if it is that period of time and you are ramped up with, you might need some extra food. So let's listen to our bodies and let's feed our bodies properly. So it is not this, like we just starve ourselves all day long and then we eat one meal and one meal is not a 23 one. Um, so, you know, I eat one meal a day and sometimes I have a six hour eating window because I eat my meal and then four hours later, I might want some Greek yogurt and granola. So I have it or whatever, you know, but like, it just makes you be mindful of what you're putting in your body. And so of course, what we eat matters. Everybody also thinks that you can just come to fasting and it's like this free for all. And we just don't eat all day and then we can go to McDonald's and no, you know, we, we really, my, my huge mantra with fasting is eat for your goal. And I even have like wristbands made up of it because I'm like, you need to ask yourself that. Like we we're here for the health benefits with intermittent fasting. We're here to keep ourselves, you know, like healthy. We're here for longevity. And so when your body is working really hard during autophagy, fasting all day long, how do you want to fuel your body. You know, I explained it to one of my clients the other day, if you spent all day long cleaning the house, sweeping, mopping, vacuuming, I mean, cleaning the house so good and your six kids come home and they're just throwing dirt all over the place, making a hot mess everywhere. Would you be like, are you serious right now? I just cleaned all day long and now you're throwing garbage at me. Think of that with your body. So your body is working hard to keep you healthy all day long. It's, it's, it's in autophagy. It's cleaning out all the dormant cancer cells, all the Alzheimer's di- the, the um, inflammation in your body. It's getting rid of, it's reversing your diabetes. It's, it's reversing a fatty liver that you maybe didn't even know you had. It's healing you from the inside out. And so we, we need to, you know, focus on that and remember what, what's happening during the fast. So when you're fasting and your body is cleaning out all those bad things for you, how do you want to replace, you know, like serve your body? How do you, what kind of foods do you want to put in it? Like, you know, do you think McDonald's is exactly what your body needs? Like, no, you don't want to put highly processed foods, you know, in your body. It's like, it's, we, we really have to use common sense when it comes to comes to that, where it's like, you know, our food is our fuel. So what we eat matters. And when you eat crap, you're going to feel like crap. That's just the bottom line. Um, but what I love about fasting is it gives us freedom to be regular humans every once in a while. And that's what I love about it. So I do try to eat for my goal every day. And sometimes my meal might be a really great meal and I'm eating for my goal with my meal. And then I'm like, Hey, that cake looks good. Might have a little bit of that. So I'm not eating for my goal if I'm having cake because cake is not eating for your goal. But when you're an intermittent faster, you know, have a little bite or two of that cake and you're not going to fall off no wagon. You're not having a cheat meal. You're not doing this, that, or the other. Cause we ain't on no wagons to fall off of. We're on a daily lifestyle. So even if you have a day or a weekend and you went out of town or whatever, and, and you know, we don't go out of town and stop fasting. Cause if you slept, you fasted newsflash. So everybody's an intermittent faster. We just need to teach people how to shorten their eating windows because most people sleep for seven to eight hours and then eat for the other 18 or whatever it is. So, 
you know, it's just kind of trying to flip flop that a little bit. And again, to keep our insulin levels low, but right. sorry, that was a long answer on, on how I <laughs> no, strong. that was a lot of, of great tidbits. And, um, I was going to come around to a lot of what you already answered anyway, but, um, if anybody has heard some scraping in the last couple of minutes, I just had to laugh because, <laughs> We had a huge blizzard here and my boys are home from school today and my 17 year old is out shoveling the front sidewalk, <laughs> front porch and he just came shoveling in his pajama pants and no shirt. It's literally like 25 degrees out, but he gets, <laughs> he gets so hot. So I am just like trying not to get distracted <laughs> by him in his pajama pants. Um, but no, that was a lot of, of great, um, material. But I would like to go back to, because the next thing that I like to ask people about are their fasting times and how they extended fasting. And for you, you kind of just jumped right in. And for other people, they really need to work on bringing their insulin levels down at least a little bit before they're feeling like they can extend that fasting time. But I think it's so important that people realize that different fasts work differently for different people. And getting into that therapeutic zone is critical for a lot of people to reverse their disease because I've had so many people, I write a lot of personalized protocols who, and people have to fill out an intake form first. They're like, I've been fasting for 16 to 18 hours for a year. And even though I feel better, I'm not gaining weight anymore. I just can't lose weight. I'm like, well, that's not a therapeutic fasting range. If you have long standing high insulin issues, you need to do more in order to reverse that. Like you will maintain it, but you're not going to reverse it. So you really kind of push yourself into that therapeutic zone pretty quickly. Um, like even a couple of 24 hour fasts can be very therapeutic for people, but talk about, you know, kind of what you did to reverse that. Like you talked about some 36 hour fasts, maybe some 42, like that's really the therapeutic zone that 36 to 42 hour fasting um, to really just get a handle on reversing you know, you were on a lot of medications at a young yeah. age. So um, you had to do some therapy, you know, get into that therapeutic zone. And, and after four months of fasting, I was off my thyroid medication and my high blood pressure uh, medication. Yeah, just it can help months. pretty quickly. Um, and I always tell people if I see on their intake form, they're on blood pressure medication or they're on insulin, like, be prepared to talk with your provider quickly because those things can change. Yeah. So talk about that a little bit. Um, so yeah, uh, about like just coming, coming like, off. The yeah. Or just, you know, how you had to extend the fast beyond like 16 to 18 hours to really see wow. the healing and how often you did that. Like how often did you do some overnight fasts? Um, right. you know, did you have to do that very often or, or were you more in that one meal a day zone most of the time? I was mainly in the one meal a day zone. And I remember in the beginning of fasting. So I didn't even think about doing a meal a day till I was eight months into intermittent fasting. I remember thinking in the very beginning, these people don't eat for 36 to 42 hours. They're out of their dang mind. Like that is <laughs> never going to be me. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right. And so, and I was fine at, at eight, at, when I, at my eight month mark, I didn't, I was like, I don't need, I, I was happy at 140. When you go from almost 210 yeah. to 140, you're living. Yeah. High. So I was like, I don't even care to lose more weight. Well, then this, this one girl on one of Jen's groups, her name's Roxy. She started doing these mill list days. And I was like, huh. And I think I kind of, so there is an extreme amount of health benefits like you mentioned with, with going over into that extended fast zone or longer fast zone, I guess is what they just like to call it. Um, so what you need to remember is that autophagy gets ramped up at 18 plus hours fasted. So if you're only getting to 18 hours every single day and you're doing an 18, six every single day, and you're never pushing yourself past that 18 mark, you know, yeah, like you say, you're, you're in a great maintenance ish and you're getting all the benefits of, of clean, you know, intermittent fasting and stuff like that. Cause you're doing the 18 hours, but for weight loss, we need to kick it up a notch. I feel like, cause you need to be, like I said, autophagy is ramped up past, past 18 hours. It even does crazier things past 24. And I know it does even more crazier things, um, for your uh, metabolism or anything past 36. And then when you do ones where you're supervised by a doctor up to even 72 hours, 
you can do. And that is like crazy health benefits for people with cancer and things like that. Um, but I was just looking for, because people will always come to me and like, oh, I'm going to do a 72 hour fast. I'm like, why? Like we're looking for a sustainability again. So don't come to fasting and try to jump into a super long fast. Don't come to fasting and even try to maybe jump into an 18, take it baby steps at a time. Close the bookends is what I'll tell people a little bit. Like if you normally eat a seven, don't eat till eight. And if you normally close at seven, then scooch it to six or something. And then slowly, like if you're a breakfast, lunch person, eat your meals at breakfast, lunch, and then you're, you know, you don't eat dinner, or maybe you're like a lunch dinner or whatever. And then you can slowly get yourself to like with my favorite meals, basically just dinner, because that's when I can like be with my kids, husband, everything. And so, you know, I, I always kind of focused my meal time around that, but I also sometimes would have a snack before. Um, and then, but so I didn't implement those longer 36 plus hour fasts until I was eight months in. And I, I, like I said, when she brought up those Millis days, I'm like, I think I'm, I'm very competitive. So I was more or less like, I wonder if I can do it. Like I've been fasting for eight months. Let's see if I can do it. That's where my head was at with it. Like I was more competing with myself to see if I could even do it. And when I went to bed and woke up the next morning, I was like, I did it. Like, this is right. so cool. <laughs> and then you feel so good the next day. You think you're going to be starving and want to eat your right arm off, but you're not. And so you're, you feel so good that you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then when you've eaten one meal a day for eight months and you can all of a sudden eat two because you have to, because it's your up day and that's what you need to do to keep your metabolism going. It is like Christmas. Cause you're like, oh, I had lunch and dinner today. And there's no guilt. There's no nothing. And so, um, that's kind of how I started doing those. And I just threw one in. She did them every Monday. It was called a Millis Monday. And it just like kind of clicked for me. And I just, and then I got, I had a lot of fun with it where I was really planning my update meals on Tuesday, or I'd be like, Hey, so-and-so I want to go to lunch. Cause I can go to lunch today. Like you'd be all like happy. Um, so that was the reason why I did it like the, the longer fast. And then now I still throw them in every once in a while. Like if I'm going, no, I'm going to be going out of town. And I'm probably going to be eating lunch and dinner. Cause that's just what everybody is going to be doing. You know, I might do one the day before that I know that next day I'm going to be eating twice because then I don't know, I guess I feel better about it. Cause I'm like, well, I'm normally one meal a day, but if I'm going to go out of town, I'll just like, I kind of, I, again, it's balance. I feel like everything in life and with, with fasting in general, it, it's just a balance. You're just trying to find the balance between you. You want to live life daily. You don't want to have all these restrictions all the time or have the guilt to, I have to get to my gym today or the end of the world is going to happen. And I'm going to, you know, not see any progress and this and that and the other, like you can be healthy and you don't have to be in the gym, you know, every single day. Yeah. I mean, it's going to move, of course. We, I'm not telling you to be a couch potato by any means. Of course, we need to move. And, and, and if your job keeps you in a chair a lot, then yeah, you probably do need to go walk the treadmill a little bit or whatever, you know, just be healthy, but but even better, go outside or something in the morning, get some vitamin D and, and a little bit of walking. But I mean, overall, it's just about your health. So yeah. Yeah. It gets tricky with those longer fasts. And a lot of people are like, I, I could like you, like I thought the same thing. Like when I made it till noon, the first time I did an 18 hour fast, I was like, Oh my gosh, I made it till noon. And then I could never think about going overnight. And then I went overnight. I'm like, I feel amazing. Like I'm going strength training. My cortisol is up. My adrenaline is up. My growth hormones up. I feel great. And like you said, it's not like I even wanted to eat in the morning. I mean, of course you get hungry. Um, but I thought, well, it's 42 hours is what I'm doing because I'm not going to eat at six o'clock in the morning. I don't feel like I need to. So I extended till noon and not everybody needs to do extended fast therapeutic fast. And so, you know, I do know plenty of people who've done 16, eight or 18, six and lost an extraordinary amount of weight. And it's not even all about weight or they've reversed their disease or they've come off medications and that is fabulous. But if you're sitting here listening to this and you've done an 18, six for two years and you feel stuck, then it might be time to even add just one challenge day in, which 
is what we'll talk about next. So, um, so you added some challenge days in. I love the mealless Monday. I used to, I used to do those myself, but now I just feel like I'm to the point where I can't do too many long, longer fasts for my person. Like I've been doing it a long enough time and my body composition is right where it's at that I feel like sometimes that's too much of a push for me. And like we were saying, if you're a menstruating woman, you need to be careful about when you do those um, longer therapeutic fasts as well. And there was just an episode on this a couple of weeks ago that you can go back and listen to. Um, but the challenge days, you can add those in sporadically, um, talk about how you, if you had to, you know, really alter your nutrition much, that's kind of the third step that we talk about with success stories, or if that just kind of happened on its own, because that happens with a lot of intermittent fasting, you might be eating junky food that's causing high spikes of insulin, the ultra processed foods, and you take that out and you just, you don't even crave those foods anymore or want those foods. So did you have to alter your nutrition much and where are you at? I know we've talked about that a little bit already, but anything else, um, along the lines of nutrition? Well, in the beginning, I, again, was just trying to fat, like get to noon, like what was just trying to like get to noon or one. Um, so, um, I, wasn't really caring a whole lot about what I was eating. I was more focusing on trying to fast and then I would eat. I wasn't even really like sticking to a fasting protocol. I don't feel like, because I feel like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I was out at, at the time. I didn't have an app either. I wasn't using, now I use like an app for data purposes, but I wasn't using an app at the time. So I I was really just going off at times in my head, like try to get to 12 or one. And then the next day I'd give myself another little goal, like try to get to two today. And I would argue with myself and be like, there's no way I can get to two. And then I would like get to busy and get to two or whatever. Um, so, so I feel like, but, it, but food wise, so I wasn't focusing on that. And I was kind of eating crappy in the very beginning. And that was another reason why I started wanting to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching for intermittent fasting. Cause I was like, I started off horrible. And I want, I don't want people to start off with bad habits. Like I started off with. So I, I did start off, like I said, eating, not great and, and eating things like Taco Bell and I mean, you know, whatever from my, like here at nachos and sodas and stuff. And then I feel like after time, I just like, I don't know if your body just starts craving them less, or I'm not saying I don't crave a Cheeto every once in a while, but I'm just saying like, I don't know. I, over time, I was just like, you know what? Like Brussels sprouts sound good. And if somebody would have told me four years ago that I would be like craving Brussels sprouts, I would have been like, you must not know me um, because that's never going to happen. And then here I am like at restaurants and I'm like, I want Brussels sprouts and I'm ordering Brussels sprouts. So over time, your body, I feel like just organically starts being like, you know what, like, like I said, what well, talked about with autophagy and stuff, it's like, you've got these healthy new cells. What do you want to fill them with? Do you want to fill them with processed foods? And, you know, so it's like, I always try to think whole foods, like whole foods, shop the outskirts of the grocery store, you know, don't go up and down the aisles very much. Um, and just really trying to focus on that. And do I do great every day? No, I don't like I, I I'm on the go all the time. And so, I mean, I eat fast food like twice a week sometimes because it's just it is what it is. It's life. But that's what I love about intermittent fasting is that, you know, you, you can have that freedom and flexibility, but then after I do have these out of town moments or whatever, you know, I do try to come home and be like, okay, let's do fish and broccolini. And, you know, just trying to like, fi again, find that balance because I just feel like that's what, what the key is there. So I don't feel like you need to really be super strict or whatever with your food. But I also just really think my little mantra of eat for your goal. What is your health goal is always what I say to my clients. So, you know, when you're asking yourself, like, what am I doing this for? Am I like, I'm doing this for my health. I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing this for my husband. I'm doing this for my family. I want to be around a long time. I don't want to get diseases. I want to try to keep my body out of inflammation. Like I want to do this. I want better energy. I want to feel better. And, and, and when you just like keep reminding yourself like that and, and then you're, you're going to want to feed your body too. I feel like the foods that 
that make you feel the way that you want to feel. And when you're, again, when you're eating for your health goal, because especially if you're in the midst of really trying to get that insulin low and stuff like that, people are always like, well, can I still have cake or can I still have, you know, and they're naming processed foods. And I'm like, but if our whole goal is to get our insulin levels low, even feeding ourselves those things, even during our eating window, and especially if you have a longish eating window of like six hours, you can eat a lot of food in, in six hours. So, um, yeah, so that I just feel like over time, your body will organically start changing. But I do feel like if you get your mind right with it and you're like, okay, I, I have to eat for my goal. Is this eating for my goal? How can I nourish my bodies? Making sure you're focusing um, your your meal should be like a very high protein. Like when you're looking at your plate of food, it needs to be like protein heavy. So, you know, meaning you can still have your potato, but you need to have your ch ch chicken breast or steak or whatever it is. And that needs to be like the biggest thing type of thing on your plate. Um, so I'm real big on like eating your protein first. If you're starting to get full, like if I'm at Texas Roadhouse and I'm eating my chicken and salmon or whatever it is, and I'm starting to get full, I, I kind of treat myself like a toddler, but I also make myself eat the meat first. And then if I'm still hungry and then I'm like, okay, now you can have more mashed potato star but I make myself get full on that protein first, because that is what is going to sustain you. That's what your body needs to keep you, you know, full and satiated to be able to fast the next day. So if you're just like starting to get full and you scarf down your potatoes, mm, pro maybe not the best, you know, or whatever. So I just, but over time, I just have consciously, I think started thinking that way a little bit more, but yeah, I, do, I do believe it comes in time, but trying to not be rigid. My, that's my biggest thing with people is don't be rigid with your fasting protocol. So like getting to 18 plus hours, that's why I always tell everybody, let your times change. Your time should be like 18, 21. Cause say you were super busy that day, 19.5, 20, 23, 21, 18, let it change and move. But if you're really wanting optimal weight loss, I tell my clients 20 plus hours fasted with that changing and moving, keeping a smaller eating window, one to four hours, not, not this one hour, not the two hour, not a three, a range you're in control. Ask yourself, how much food do you really need? Like focusing on that main meal, making sure you're getting your nutrients and your nutrition in, in your main meal. And then if you really feel like you need something else after that, then you have something else after that. Like, um, but I don't know. So that's just, that's just how I really feel about fasting is just really trying to be not so rigid and just trying to be mindful. Getting rid of diet brain is really hard, you guys. So like, I mean, I constantly, especially from coming from my background, with so much, you know, with CrossFit and, and nutritionists and all these things telling me I have to eat this and I have to eat, you know, 30 minutes after my workout and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all a lot. And so when your brain just can, can try to, you all almost have to reset your brain. And I still have diet brain that gets me where I'm like, Oh man, did I eat enough? I don't know if I had enough Did I, you know, and it's like, did I eat enough calories, but calories don't matter star. Yeah, I know. But and, and, you know, so you have diet brain constantly doing this and you have to be strong enough. I feel like, you know, it's fasting takes a lot of discipline and willpower. And so that's why I feel like knowing your why and having your why is the only thing that's going to keep you motivated and going, you know, yes, it's great to listen to other people's stories. Yes. It's great to listen to the podcast and get like re-motivated but ultimately this is about you. This is about your life and you're in control and you are the only one that can kick your own butt. Like nobody else is going to do it for you. So if you're sick of feeling the way that you're feeling, do something about it. And you can easily do something about it by just skipping a couple meals, do time restrictive eating, focusing on the food that you're putting in your mouth and you when you feel so bad and when you're constantly drugged down by all the food that your crappy foods you're putting in your body, you don't even realize how good you can actually feel and what amazing energy is and ketosis is and those kinds of things. You can't even fathom how awesome you can feel because you're so freaking miserable and stuck where you're at. But if you just get yourself unstuck, pull yourself off the couch, move, do a few things focus on clean fasting to get your insulin as low as possible. Use the tools that are out there. 
you know, get the books, follow the right people. That's a big one because <laughs> there's so much crazy information out there that makes me want to black out sometimes where I'm like, these people aren't living fasting as a lifestyle. They don't have it. They're not understanding it yet. Okay. So if you, you really need to make sure you're, I feel like, you know, you've got, you're, you're following the right people because you'll just get too much stuff in your head and, and, and then you're going to try to overcomplicate fasting. And, and that's not the goal. The goal is to just keep our insulin low so we can tap into our stored fat, fuel our bodies, repeat it the next day. It's literally that easy <laughs> or can be. Yeah. And nutrition too. It just gets so overcomplicated. Like, nope, let's see foods that were meant to be eaten and stay away from the barcode foods and yes. you'll be much better. And I know with my students, and we talked a lot about this on the podcast, really focusing in on that first meal, whenever it is you break your fast, whether it's 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., like that meal coming off of your fast needs to be high in protein. And then we talk about meal order so that you can keep your blood sugar more level, because if you eat a high carb, starchy, sugary meal coming off that fast, you're going to just, you know, roller coaster, blood, blood sugar, roller coaster throughout the day. And you're going to make it so much harder for yourself. So if you can just focus on that first meal coming off your fast, you'll set the tone for the entire day and feel so much better. So yeah, we we'll, we need to keep things as simple as possible. And, you know, that's where that sustainability component really comes in. Um, so the last thing what I like, just said, I really want to point out what you just said though, about breaking your fast with protein. I really cannot stress that enough. Like I, I started out breaking my fast with a snack. And then after about, I, I do kind of feel like it was around an eight or nine month mark about the same time I find, found the Millis days fasting became hard for me all of a sudden. Like I, the, I was like, why is I'm hungry at 10 AM? What's going on? Well, then I started realizing I was breaking my fast with a snack like I always had, but then I was eating way too much of my snack because I think I was already like basically in ketosis, burning my stored fat. My body's like searching for energy. So I'm getting so I'm eating so much of this snack that's even if I was eating hummus and pretzel chips, Star would eat like half the tub of hummus and half the bag of pretzel chips. So then dinner comes and you're like, meh, you're not really hungry. And then, you know, if dessert comes around, you're starting to get hungry then because you ha had a hummus and pretzel chips and you skip dinner basically. So the next day I was like so hungry at like 10 a.m. And I'm like, why am I so hungry? Well, then I realized like, well, silly, you're not getting any protein for one because you're eating. And so then I'm like, okay, how can I fix this? So I started breaking my fast with my main meal. And I mean, I go hell or high water trying to make this happen. And I'm, you know, I really, really try to do it because it, I feel so much better. And our bodies are so hungry. You know, when you think about it, they're working really hard, right? They're so hungry when you're going to feed them. Please don't go break your fast with like Starbucks and a cake pop or even Starbucks and a donut or whatever, like or a bagel. No, right. no. Oh my gosh. It's awful. So, so high, like you said, high protein, I mean, serious, like egg whites. If you're breaking your fast, that first meal is you really need to focus on that first meal because it sets the tone for the whole day too. If I break my fast with high processed, crappier food, even if it's like a, um, fast food, cause I have to eat it it doesn't stick with me very long usually. And I will start getting hungry because it's processed. So it's, it's not meant to sustain you. It's meant to keep you full for a little while. So you're back in line at the next fat, fast food place. That's what it's designed to do. So that's why I tell people, if you want a cheeseburger, go buy your freaking hamburger, grass fed hamburger, come home and cook it, make your cheeseburger at home. That's what I do. And I make my homemade in and out sauce and put that on there. So I'm eating tons of mayo, you know, that stuff is not good for you, but I had a grass fed, whatever beef at home, much better than, you know, going to McDonald's. My hamburger at home is going to sustain me much better than a McDonald's hamburger. So just really trying to focus on on that. I, the protein is just like I said, yeah, huge. And whatever you do, don't break your fast with the beverage or something sweet, you know, so don't break your fast with a donut. And, and I don't recommend breaking it with like soda. Like, don't be like, Oh, my window's open. Let's go get a Starbucks. Cause your blood sugar is freaking. And then you're going to 
nosedive down and, uh, and then you're not literally not going to feel good. So yeah. yeah I just and there are that. food scientists out there making those ultra processed foods with the bliss, the perfect bliss point with just the right amount of sugar, seed oils, salt, so that you feel addicted and you addicted. Know, mm-hmm. yep, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, last thing I would love to talk about is um, the, the last question has to do, we call it easier mind. And we like to talk about like stress and sleep and how that play, cause those two things are so foundational. Like good sleep is so foundational with fasting. And so is um, stress, like overall stress. And you're in Bibby, B- Bibby, busy momville, like I am, where it's like, you're managing a family. You are on, you know, you, your life in the fast lane. Um, and so many women and men too, listening to this are like, okay, yeah, but how do I make this sustainable for me? Um, but partic- in particular, talk about like, were sleep and stress problematic and how you overcame anything um, that was challenging in those two areas? Sleep is huge. Sleep is very important. Like, I mean, when I was obese, I used to binge watch Vampire Diaries till two or three (laughs) in the morning. And I don't know why. I have no idea why. Um, And so then I would wake up and I'd wake up tired and like whatever. And now I really try to get myself in bed before 10, if at all possible, which some days that just does not work. I mean, last night it was more like 10, 30, 11, cause I was driving home from the city, but it doesn't happen all the time, but, um, sleep huge. I feel like the more you can get to bed before midnight, of course, I don't, it's, you get better, um, the REM sleep or whatever that they talk about. So I always keep that in my head that it's like, okay, you're, you're getting crappy sleep after midnight. So you better make sure you get to bed some good hours before midnight. So we get that extra REM going. Right. Um, so the, I, I do try to be in bed, like I said, around, like I make my teenagers go to bed at nine 30. So I mean, I just go to bed right after them. Um, and, and so I do think that's huge, but I am up every morning at six, six 30. Sometimes I have to get up at four if I'm driving, whatever. Um, but for the most part that that's my sleep. And I do feel like sleep is, is huge. And some people have a little bit of issues sometimes with sleeping and fasting and stuff like that. And I do always recommend like just taking some melatonin at nighttime, not the chewable kind, obviously, but like just a pill. Um, so that, that helps a lot of people also taking some magnesium at nighttime can help a lot of people. So, um, those are two things that I will, um, put out there when people are saying they have a hard time sleeping. Um, but, uh, and stress. Yeah. Well, we're all, I mean, how do we stay? Yeah. Yeah. I remember going to the chiropractor one time. He's like, oh my gosh, your neck. It's just like so messed up. Like you must be stressed. And I looked at him like, I have six kids. (laughs) Like, and we're a blended family. Does that even hashtag stress any more than what? (laughs) So yeah, I'm like, I I don't know. I feel like you need to find things though to help you. And I, because I'm trying to do this right now too, uh, like, go to yoga or something like, and I hate yoga. So I ain't even the first person to be like, I do yoga. Oh. I want to love yoga. I want to love yoga. I want to do it. I but tried I, so hard, but I just I tried so hard to love it. And I'm like, I feel like my body is literally like the tin man. Like there's something about me that doesn't bend like other people bend. I'm like, you are like Gumby. I am the tin man. This is not compatible. <laughs> we need to try something else. <laughs> like I have to do the modified, modified, modified version of everything. Um, so, but like, even just like breath work, breathing, like I've been looking into that a lot. Like there's, you know, people that do a lot of breath work, like finding tools, or even if it is going and listening to podcasts, almost like something to try to de-stress your mind when you're feeling super high stressed or whatever, like trying to do something to kind of ground you and bring you, just bring you back down a little bit to earth or whatever. Um, because, and especially me, I'm, you're talking to the wrong person. I'm the most high, strung, stressful, <laughs> OCD, like crazy person ever. So I'm like, I'm always high, strung and stressed, but, um, I do try to like, I always tell myself, chill star, chill, you know, like, so I feel like just being conscious, but I never used to be that conscious. And that's why I love fasting too. Cause I feel like it has opened up my mind. Like, I feel like I'm me again. I feel like 
all those years that I was suppressed for so long with all the foods and the crappy stuff and the, the whatever I was putting into my body was like suppressing star and turning me into this person I wasn't. Not to mention I was taking all these antidepressants and anxiety medications and everything, which I'm completely off of now. So I don't know. I just, I feel like fasting overall, I feel like it makes us better humans because it makes us be productive because we're trying to get fasted hours in. Right. And, and we're trying to keep going. So I'm like, if you're bored, you're going to, you're setting yourself up for failure. So you, you got to stay busy because like, I will even make myself like go scrub the bathroom or go do something that star really doesn't want to do just to keep me going. I'll go get gas when I don't need to go get gas. I will run errands when I don't really need to run errands. I'll go get the mail. I don't care what you got to do to keep yourself busy to where you're not going to the pantry. Cause as soon as you're bored, if you're sitting there watching TV, I have found myself in front of my pantry before. And I, all of a sudden it was like a light switch. And I'm like, how did I get to the pantry? I just <laughs> walked over here and I think I opened the door and I literally don't remember. <laughs> like it was all like a robot autopilot. Like, Oh, you're bored. Go to the pantry. And then you're all, why am I at the pantry? Like, I literally had this thing happen to me one day. And I was like, whoa star close the pantry you don't need anything in a pantry if you're hungry go open the refrigerator and find something healthy in there so I was like oh my gosh I just went to the pantry without really thinking about it and if I wouldn't have been an intermittent faster I would have grabbed out my favorite Cheetos or chips or Cheez-Its or whatever and I would have started snacking on a couple thinking nothing about it at 10 a.m or whatever this was and so, but since I'm an intermittent faster, it made me go, what the heck are you doing? Shut the doors. And so, and that's why I love fasting. Cause it just, it wakes our mind up. It, it, I feel like it just kind of like wakes your whole soul up or something. And you're like, okay, like this is the way our bodies were designed to work. You know, like whoever it is you believe in made our bodies designed to work properly. But over time, the world and the way that they make our food nowadays and all that kind of stuff has gotten us all to this crazy addictive place and to where we feel like we crave these things. We need these things. We're going to die without having a, whatever, a diet Coke or whatever it is. You're going to be fine. You've got this. It, those things have you wrapped right now, but once you start slowly disconnecting yourself, don't try to chop yourself off all at once. I don't even care if you're, you know, what it is you're addicted to. I won't tell you, Oh, you, you can't have any more diet soda ever. No, but I am going to teach you how to be mindful about when you choose to have that diet soda, not having that diet soda on your way to work, just because it's a habit. We want to break those habits because even good habits can be bad habits. Like people that are shoving protein shakes down every single day. I'm like, why are you having a protein shake every day? Are you even hungry? Well, no, I just thought I thought I needed some more protein. Well, okay. We don't do that. We don't ever, you know, we don't ever eat for future hunger. So don't ever be like, well, I might get hungry tomorrow. I should eat some more today. No, your body will search for the fuel that it needs tomorrow. Tomorrow. Worry about today. So worry about how you're feeling in, in the moment. Worry, worry about right now. Am I hungry right now? And if you are, then go make a healthy uh, ha uh, choice or whatever and choose something you know good to eat. And a little rule of thumb I give myself, like if I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm like, okay, if you're hungry, you'll go eat an apple and peanut butter. But if you want peanut butter pretzels from Costco, then you must not be hungry. You're just wanting a snack. You're just craving that peanut butter and pretzel processed stuff. But if you're truly hungry, you'll go eat an apple or you'll go eat cottage cheese. And sometimes I fold my arms like a two-year-old and I'm like, fine, I just won't eat anything then because I don't want that. And that is going to make me feel bad. So I just won't have anything. And then sometimes I'm like, no, I'm seriously hungry and I'll go eat the cottage cheese or whatever it is. But I kind of will talk to myself like that. Like, don't allow yourself to just go grab when we just allow ourselves. So it's all here. It's all up, I feel like, in the mind. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, when they first start intermittent fasting, I did the same thing for months. Like, oh, I better, like, I'm not going to be eating past six. So I I better just go have a little bit of extra something because yeah. then I'm not going to be eating for 18 or 20 hours. And 
it, my mindset, I don't, I never think like that anymore, but at the beginning I did, I'm like, I'm going to yeah. stuff a little bit more food in because yeah. I'm going to be done eating now for 18 or 20 hours. But that, I think that that's okay. When you first start, um, you know, just yeah. kind of getting used to, to some parameters and, you know, setting some rules for yourself. Um, and then within time, you just, I don't, it's like that just gradually left. Like, I just don't ever think like that anymore, but it did take several months. But um, I think it's interesting to how you mentioned about sleep when you were obese, you'd stay up till two or three, you know, one or two in the morning. And you just wonder like how that perpetuated the obesity even more because then your cortisol's high, it's harder, you know, like you're just snacking and, you know, the part about, the pantry going to the pantry. It's like, we have been lied to for so many years and decades that so many people would go to the pantry and see a granola bar or some Cheez-Its or whatever. And they think, well, I'm just, I'm still going to be under my calories, you know, like oh lied about dieting and calories. Like I'll just have a handful of Cheez-Its. It's no big deal because I'm still going to be under my 1200, 1500 calories or whatever crap you've been fed. Mm -hmm. That you need to stay under, but you're just, ugh. I mean, people yeah. who listen to this, they know, but it's like, we have to, yeah, get out of that diet mentality and focus on our hormones and focus on nourishment and focus yes. on getting our insulin levels down. Well, you've been wonderful. I know, um, where can we find you? And then, um, tell us a little bit about the book that you co-authored, correct? You're yes. Of a yes. Book where people can find that. Um, and then if they want to connect with you further. Uh, yeah, I, me and a good friend Paige and Lori Lewis did a, um, a co-authors on a book and it's just a book of, it's called Women Action Takers Who Gained by Losing and it can be found on Amazon or any uh, book, you know, platform thingy, um, audio book or, or not audio, but the, the your books or whatever. Um, but, and you can also get a free copy of it, a digital copy of it on my website, which is just www.lovemyifing, so I-F-I-N-G, life.com. Um, and I, I, I have my so a little bit of my story on there, and then I will link all my podcasts on there. So this one will be on there. And then um, um, you can go to like contact me or something. And once you do that, it will automatically send you a, a free copy of my book. And, um, I am also big, like kind of, or I'm, I'm post a lot on Instagram is where my main platform is, which you can find me there at the same love my IFing life. And, um, I post daily in my stories, like what I'm eating and what I'm doing. So you can kind of see and follow that I'm all over the place. Sometimes I crack myself up because I'm like, you talk about eat for your goal, eat for your goal. And then you're like, I'm at Canes <laughs> and I'm like, but this is life. You guys like, this is just like, like, that's the freedom and the flexibility I feel like that we have with fasting. And that's what I try to show that there is balance, that you can still feel good, have energy, lose weight and have these things, but you do need to learn how to make it your lifestyle and, you know, not make it so like so rigid and so, so strict with that. And, um, so yeah. Awesome. Well, I know I had an interview with, um, you mentioned Lori, Lewis, um, an, a co-author of the book that you read and she was many episodes ago, but I know that we had a recording and that's how I found you. And we've been connected through Instagram as well. So you have really great content there. Um, we appreciate your time. We love your success story and oh, hopefully gosh. people got some great tidbits out of yeah. the hour. And we thank you so much for coming on today. Well, thank you so much again for having me. Really appreciate it.